Hello all. I hope you guys have seen the part 1 of this video. This video is the continuation of the same video. If you haven't watched that video, then please click on this card to watch that video right away. Let's move ahead with the next type of question that came in Alex's quiz. In next birthday party, 78 out of 100 of his friends chose vanilla over chocolate ice cream. Find the empirical probability of a random friend opting for chocolate ice cream. Well, the probability for choosing the chocolate ice cream will be equal to 78 divided by 100, which comes to 0.78, right? Well, this was very simple, isn't it? Let's take a few seconds again and let's read the question. We have to find the probability of a random friend opting for a chocolate ice cream. So, out of 100, 78 of his friends chose vanilla. So, the number of friends who did actually choose the chocolate ice cream was 100 minus 78, which comes to 22. So, the probability of choosing the chocolate ice cream comes to 22 divided by 100. which comes to 0.22 So one thing that we have learned here is we should read the question thoroughly and then we should submit our answer And then Alex submitted his answer Alex was just waiting for the question on card to be there and the next question was In a pack of 52 cards find the probability of drawing a king or a queen Awesome he thought this will be a piece of cake In a pack of cards there are four suits clubs hearts diamonds and spades Each suit has 13 cards So the number of kings in a pack will be 4 and the number of queens in a pack will also be 4 So the probability of drawing a king or a queen will be 4 plus 4 by 52 which will eventually be 2 by 13. Alex was enjoying this a lot and did not wanted this to end. Almost immediately the next question was on his screen. Two coins were tossed simultaneously. Find the probability of drawing at least one head exactly one head and at most one tail well this is a tricky question well he knew when two coins are tossed the sample space is so the probability of getting at least one head well here the word at least means that there should be minimum of one head so from the sample space we will choose all the possibilities which have at least one head which will be hh ht and th which will be 3 by 4 so the probability of getting at least one head is 3 by 4 the next question is we need to find exactly one head Now when the question asks for exactly one we have to make sure that the number is neither greater nor lesser it should be exactly just one so from our sample space we will choose ht and th only which comes to 2 by 4 which comes to 1 by 2 now the third part of the question asks for at most one tail Now here when the question says at most it means that it should have maximum one tail even if it is lesser which means zero that will also be okay but maximum it should have only one tail so the probabilities that we can choose from the sample space will be hh ht and th which comes to 3 by 4 again now here we can see that the probability of getting at least one head 
and the probability of getting at most one tail are same isn't it he realized that the questions on probability were so relatable with our daily life that they can be solved intuitively well alex was really enjoying this and then on his screen it showed the last question a dice is rolled 200 times and the observations are tabulated below find the probability that the number of the dice is an odd prime not less than 4 not more than 2 so here again we have to notice what exactly the question is asking for now we know so for the first part we have to find an odd prime so for that we need to know what is an odd number and also what is a prime number right so the first odd prime number that we have in the sample space is 3 therefore the probability of getting an odd prime it will be equal to number of time 3 is observed divided by total number of times the experiment is performed right which comes to 33 divided by 200 which comes to 0.165 Well the second part of the question asks for a number not less than 4. Now when it says not less than 4 it means it should be greater than 4 right and which all are the numbers which are greater than 4 here yes 5 and 6 So we have to find out the probability of number not less than 4 will be equal to the number of times 5 has appeared and the number of times 6 has appeared which will be 68 divided by 200 which will be 0.34 and the last part of the question asks for a number not more than 2 in the sample space now here it says not more than which means we have to look out for the numbers which are lesser than 2 now in the sample space the number which are less than 2 is just number 1 so the probability of not more than 2 will be equal to the number of times 1 has appeared which is 34 divided by 200 which comes to 0.17 Alex got a perfect score of 7 by 7. He was glad that he could solve any questions on basic probability. He then moved on to other posts on the social media. Well, thanks for watching this session. If you have liked this session, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe our channel. Hit the bell icon and never miss another update from Let's Teach. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.